Part Two, Chapter Eight of A Brief History of English and American Literature. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Kalinda. A Brief History of English and American Literature by Henry A. Beers. Part Two, Chapter Eight Theological and Religious Literature in America by John Fletcher Hurst. The important field of theology and religion in America has yielded many and rich additions to the storehouse of letters. The Bay Psalm Book, published in Cambridge, Massachusetts in 1640, was the first book printed in the English colonies in America. Its leading authors were Richard Mather, 1596-1669, of Dorchester, father of Increase and grandfather of the still more famous Cotton Mather, Thomas Weld, and John Eliot, both of Roxbury. The book was a few years later revised by Henry Dunster, and passed through as many as twenty-seven editions. While it was both printed and used in England and Scotland by dissenting churches, it was a constant companion in private and public worship in the Calvinistic churches of the colonies. The early colonial writers on theology included Charles Chauncey, 1589-1672, the second president of Harvard College, who wrote a treatise on justification, Samuel Willard, 1640-1707, whose complete body of divinity was the first folio publication in America, Solomon Studdard, 1643-1729, whose most celebrated work was The Doctrine of Instituted Churches, in which he advocated the converting power of the Lord's Supper, Charles Chauncey, 1705-1787, a great-grandson of President Chauncey, celebrated as a stickler for great plainness in writing and speech, and one of the founders of universalism in New England, whose seasonable thoughts was in opposition to the preaching of Whitefield, and Aaron Burr, 1716-1757, father of the political opponent and slayer of Alexander Hamilton, and author of The Supreme Deity of Our Lord Jesus Christ. James Blair, 1656 to 1743, of Virginia, the virtual founder and first president of William and Mary College, wrote Our Savior's Sermon on the Mount, containing 117 sermons. The two tenants, Gilbert, 1703 to 1764, and William, 1705 to 1777, Samuel Finley, 1717 to 1764, and Samuel Davies, 1723 to 1761, were pulpit orators whose sermons still hold high rank in the homiletic world. Others of the colonial period distinguished for their ability are John Davenport, 1597 to 1670, of New Haven, author of The Saint's Anchor Hold, Edward Johnson, died 1682, of Woburn, author of The Wonder-Working Providence of Zion's Savior in New England, Jonathan Dickinson, 1688-1747, the first president of the College of New Jersey, Princeton University, who published Familiar Letters Upon Important Subjects in Religion, Samuel Johnson, 1696-1772, a distinguished advocate of episcopacy in Connecticut, Thomas Clapp, 1703-1767, president of Yale College, who was the author of The Religious Condition of Colleges, Samuel Mather, 1706-1785, a son of Cotton Mather, among whose works was An Attempt to Show That America Was Known to the Ancients, and Thomas Chalkley, 1675-1749, and John Woolman, 1720-1772, both belonging to the Friends and whose journals are admirable specimens of the Quaker spirit and simplicity. Some of the leading writers on theology whose activity was greatest about the time of the American Revolution are worthy of study. They are John Witherspoon, 1722-1794, who, while he is better known as the sixth president of the College of New Jersey and a political writer of the Revolution, was also the author of Ecclesiastical Characteristics, a satirical work aimed at the moderate party of the Church of Scotland, and written before he left that country for America. Charles Thompson, 1729-1824, to who was for fifteen years the Secretary of the Continental Congress, and published a translation of the Bible. Elias Boudinot, 1740-1821, to the first president of the American Bible Society, and a leading philanthropist of his time, who wrote The Age of Revelation, a reply to Paine's Age of Reason, 
Nathan Strong, 1748 to 1816, the editor of the Connecticut Evangelical Magazine and pastor of First Church, Hartford. Isaac Backus, 1724 to 1806, the author of the well-known History of New England with particular reference to the Baptists. Ezra Stiles, 1727 to 1795, president of Yale College, who published many discourses and wrote an ecclesiastical history of New England, which was not completed and never published. William White, 1748 to 1836, Bishop of Pennsylvania for fifty years, who wrote several works on episcopacy, one of which was Memoir of the Episcopal Church in the United States, and William Lynn, 1752 to 1808, who published sermons on the leading personages of scripture history. Belonging also to the Revolutionary period, these should be noted. Mather Biles, 1706 to 1788, a wit and punster of loyalist leanings, some of whose sermons have been many times printed, and who was a kinsman of the Mathers. Jonathan Mayhew, 1720-1766, to whose sermon on the repeal of the Stamp Act was the most famous of his stirring addresses on the political issues already prominent at the time of his death. William Smith, 1727-1803, to provost of the University of Pennsylvania, who was, not to speak of his other works, the author of several meritorious sermons. Samuel Seabury, 1729-1796, the first Protestant Episcopal bishop, and author of two volumes of sermons. And Jacob Duchesne, 1739-1798, rector of Christ Church, Philadelphia, who abandoned the American cause, but whose sermons were highly prized. A quartet of those who gained distinction as writers on doctrine are Joseph Bellamy, 1719-1790, an influential divine of the Edwardian school, and author of The True Religion Delineated, Samuel Hopkins, 1721-1803, the advocate of disinterested benevolence as a cardinal principle of theology, and author of The System of Doctrines Contained in Divine Revelation, Jonathan Edwards the Younger, 1745-1801, President of Union College and author of several discourses, the most celebrated of which are the three on the necessity of atonement and its consistency with free grace and forgiveness. These sermons are the basis of what has since been named the Edwardian theory. And Elhanan Winchester, 1751-1797, the Universalist preacher, one of whose chief works was The Universal Restoration. In the earlier group of theological authorship of the present century, or the national period, taking conspicuous place as doctrinal writers are Nathaniel Emmons, 1745-1840, one of the foremost of the new school of Calvinistic theology, whose works on the important discussion lasting through half a century are marked by a peculiar force and point. Samuel Stanhope Smith, 1750-1819, president of the College of New Jersey, and author of Evidences of the Christian Religion. His successor in office, Ashbel Green, 1762-1848, to whose chief literary labor was bestowed on The Christian Advocate, a religious monthly, which he edited for twelve years, and who wrote lectures on the shorter catechism. Henry Ware, 1764-1845, to the acknowledged head of the Unitarians prior to the appearance of Channing professor of divinity in Harvard, and author of The Letters to Trinitarians and Calvinists. Leonard Woods, 1774-1854, to professor in Andover for thirty-eight years, author of several able books on the Unitarian controversy. And Wilbur Fisk, 1792-1839, to the distinguished preacher and educator, and author of The Calvinistic Controversy. Other theological lights of the early years of the Republic are also John Mitchell Mason, 1770 to 1829, provost of Columbia College, later president of Dickinson College, a prime mover in the founding of Union Theological Seminary, and author of many sermons of a high order. Edward Payson, 1783 to 1827, whose sermons are noted for the same ardent spirituality and beauty that marked his life and pastorate at Portland, Maine. John Summerfield, 1798 to 1825, a volume of whose strangely eloquent sermons were published after his early death. Ebenezer Porter, 1772-1834, professor in Andover, whose lectures on revivals of religion are still worthy of consultation. 
Eliphalet Knott, 1773 to 1866, president of Union College for sixty-two years, whose lectures on temperance are accounted among the best literature on that great reform. John Henry Hobart, 1775 to 1830, bishop of the Diocese of New York, who was the author of Festivals and Fasts, and one of the founders of the General Theological Seminary in New York. Nathan Bangs, 1778 to 1862, a leading Methodist divine who wrote A History of the Methodist Episcopal Church and Errors of Hoskinsianism, and Leonard Withington, 1789 to 1885, author of Solomon's Song Translated and Explained, a valuable exegetical work. In a second group of leading writers on religion, coming nearer the middle of the nineteenth century, we find as doctrinal authors Archibald Alexander, 1772 to 1851, author of Evidences of Christianity, Hosea Ballou, 1771 to 1852, the universalist preacher and author of An Examination of the Doctrine of Future Retribution, Nathaniel W. Taylor, 1786 to 1859, the author of Lectures on the Moral Government of God, in which there is a marked divergence from the strict school of Calvinistic theologians, Gardner Spring, 1785 to 1873, a tower of strength in the pulpit of New York for over fifty years, and author of The Bible Not of Man, Alexander Campbell, 1788 to 1865, whose public debates contain the record of his distinguished career as a controversialist and mark the formation of the religious society called Disciples of Christ, Robert J. Breckinridge, 1800 to 1871, whose work on the knowledge of God objectively and subjectively considered gave him great distinction, George W. Bethune, 1805 to 1862, who besides several hymns wrote lectures on the Heidelberg Catechism, and James H. Thornwell, 1811 to 1862, of the Southern Presbyterians, who left an able, systematic theology. Those whose works were of a more practical nature are Samuel Miller, 1769 to 1850, whose most telling book was Letters on Clerical Habits and Manners, Lyman Beecher, 1775 to 1863, the celebrated father of his more celebrated son, and author of Sermons on Temperance, Thomas H. Skinner, 1791 to 1871, professor in Andover and later in Union Theological Seminary, who wrote Aids to Preaching and Hearing, and translated and edited Vinay's Homiletics and Pastoral Theology, Charles G. Finney, 1792 to 1875, of Oberlin, whose lectures on revivals embody the principles on which he himself conducted his celebrated evangelistic labors, Francis Wayland, 1796 to 1865, the Baptist divine and author of a textbook on moral science, who also wrote The Moral Dignity of the Missionary Enterprise, Ichabod S. Spencer, 1798 to 1854, whose pastor's sketches have a perennial interest, Theodore Dwight Wolsey, 1801 to 1889, who besides other books on the classics and law, published The Religion of the Present and the Future, Bella Bates Edwards, 1802 to 1852, of Andover, whose chief work was that bestowed upon the Quarterly Observer, later the Biblical Repository, and still later as editor of Bibliotheca Sacra, James Waddle Alexander, 1804 to 1859, author of Consolation, or Discourses to the Suffering Children of God, and George B. Cheever, 1807 to 1890, who wrote several popular books on temperance, one being Deacon Giles's Distillery. A group of noted writers whose books have special bearing on the Bible are Moses Stewart, 1780 to 1852, the distinguished Hebraist and author of several commentaries and of a Hebrew grammar, whose scholarship was one of the chief attractions at Andover, Samuel H. Turner, 1790 to 1861, the distinguished commentator on Romans, Hebrews, Ephesians, and Galatians, Edward Robinson, 1794 to 1863, whose Biblical Researches and New Testament Lexicon mark him as one of the foremost scholars of the century, George Bush, 1796 to 1860, known chiefly as the author of Commentaries on the Early Parts of the Old Testament, Albert Barnes, 1798 to 1870, whose notes on the scriptures still have a large place among the more popular works of exegesis, Ezra Pound, 
Stephen Olin, 1797 to 1851, and John Price Durbin, 1800 to 1876, both distinguished as educators and pulpit orators of the Methodist Episcopal Church, who each wrote on travels in Palestine and adjoining countries. William M. Thompson, 1806 to 1894, the missionary and author of The Land and the Book, a work of perpetual value. Joseph Addison Alexander, 1809-1860, to 1860, the famous philologist and author of valuable commentaries and a work on New Testament literature, and George Burgess, 1809-1866, to 1866, who wrote The Book of Psalms in English Verse. Those who employed their pens in the field of history are William Mead, 1789-1862, to 1862, author of Old Churches, Ministers, and Families of Virginia, George Junkin, 1790 to 1868, who wrote The Vindication, which gives an account of the trial of Albert Barnes from the old school point of view. William B. Sprague, 1795 to 1876, whose Annals of the American Pulpit form a lasting monument to his literary ability. Robert Baird, 1798 to 1863, author of A View of Religion in America. Francis L. Hawkes, 1798 to 1866, who published The History of the Protestant Episcopal Church in Maryland and Virginia. Morris J. Raffal, 1798 to 1868, a prolific Jewish writer, whose post-biblical history of the Jews is a valuable book. Thomas C. Upham, 1799 to 1871, professor in Bowdoin College and author of Mental Philosophy, who also wrote The Life and Religious Experience of Madame Guillon. William H. Furness, 1802-1896, long the leader of Unitarians in Philadelphia, from whose imaginative pen came a peculiar book, A History of Jesus. J. Daniel Rupp, born 1803, who wrote A History of the Religious Denominations in the United States, and Abel Stevens, 1815-1897, author of The History of Methodism, and also of A History of the Methodist Episcopal Church. Ashael Nettleton, 1784-1844, to 1844, best known as an evangelist, published a popular collection of village hymns. Henry U. Onderdonk, 1789-1858, and John Henry Hopkins, 1792-1868, each wrote on the episcopacy. Samuel Hanson Cox, 1793-1880, a vigorous and original preacher of the New School Presbyterians, was the author of Interviews Memorable and Useful. Henry B. Bascom, 1796-1850, whose sermons and lectures were of vigorous thought but florid style, was very popular for many years. Nicholas Murray, 1802-1861, under the nom de plume of Kirwan, wrote the celebrated letters to Archbishop Hughes on the Catholic question. And Edward Thompson, 1810-1870, Bishop of the Methodist Episcopal Church, was author of Moral and Religious Essays and Other Works. Among the American singers of sacred lyrics are Samuel Davies, 1724 to 1761, Timothy Dwight, 1752 to 1817, Mrs. Phoebe H. Brown, 1783 to 1861, Thomas Hastings, 1784 to 1872, John Pierpont, 1785 to 1866, Mrs. Lydia H. Sigourney, 1791 to 1865. William B. Tappan, 1794-1849, William A. Muhlenberg, 1796-1877, George W. Doen, 1799-1859, Ray Palmer, 1808-1887, Samuel F. Smith, 1808-1895, Edmund H. Sears, 1810-1876, William Hunter, 1811-1877, George Duffield, 1818-1888, Arthur Cleveland Cox, 1818-1896, Samuel Longfellow, 1819-1892, and Alice, 1820-1871, and Phoebe Carey, 1824-1871. From the large number of writers of the latter half of this century whose productions have been added to the treasures of thought for coming generations and are worthy of generous attention we name, Charles Hodge, 1797-1878, known best by his systematic theology, and his son, Archibald Alexander Hodge, 1823-1886, author of Outlines of Theology. Charles P. McIlvain, 1798-1873, whose Evidences of Christianity are widely known and read. 
Mark Hopkins, 1802 to 1887, who gave the world The Law of Love and Love as a Law, Edwards A. Park, born 1808, whose leading work was on the atonement, Albert Taylor Bledsoe, 1809 to 1877, whose Theodicy was his chief work, James McCosh, 1811 to 1894, whose later years were given to America, and whose Christianity and Positivism and Religious Aspects of Evolution were written in this country, Davis W. Clark, 1812 to 1871, author of Man All Immortal, John Miley, 1813 to 1896, who was the author of A Clear and Able Systematic Theology of the Arminian Type, Thomas O. Summers, 1812 to 1882, who was a prolific author and whose systematic theology has been published since his death, and Lorenzo D. Maccabee, 1815 to 1897, who wrote on the foreknowledge of God. Those who have devoted their talent to the exposition of the scriptures are Thomas J. Conant, 1802 to 1891, a biblical scholar and author of Historical Books of the Old Testament, Daniel D. Whedon, 1808 to 1885, who wrote Freedom of the Will and was the author of a valuable commentary on the New Testament. Horatio B. Hackett, 1808 to 1875, whose exegetical works on the Acts, Philemon, and Philippians have great merit. Taylor Lewis, 1809 to 1877, the Nestor of classic linguistics, whose Six Days of Creation and the Divine Human in the Scriptures are among his best books. Melanchthon W. Jacobus, 1816-1876, to 1876, whose commentaries on the Gospels, Acts, and Genesis unite critical ability and popular style. Ezra Abbott, 1818-1884, to 1884, author of a critical work on the authorship of the Fourth Gospel. Howard Crosby, 1826-1891, to 1891, the vigorous preacher and author of The Seven Churches of Asia. William M. Taylor, 1829-1895, to 1895, whose works include excellent studies on several prominent Bible characters, Moses, David, Daniel, and Joseph. Henry Martin Harmon, 1822-1897, the author of An Introduction to the Study of the Holy Scriptures, and Henry B. Ridgeway, 1830-1895, who wrote The Lord's Land, a work based on his personal observations during an Oriental tour. Those who have treated historical themes include Charles Eliot, 1792-1869, whose ablest work was The Delineation of Roman Catholicism, Francis P. Kenrick, 1797-1863, who besides being the author of A Version of the Scriptures with Commentary, also wrote a work on the supremacy of the Pope, Matthew Simpson, 1810-1884, the eloquent bishop, who wrote A Cyclopedia of Methodism and A Hundred Years of Methodism, James Freeman Clark, 1810-1888, author of The Ten Great Religions of the World, Henry B. Smith, 1815-1877, whose history of the Church of Christ in chronological tables is much admired for its conciseness, accuracy, and thoroughness, William H. Odenheimer, 1817-1879, author of The Origin and Compilation of the Prayer Book, Philip Schaff, 1819-1893, the author of A Learned History of the Christian Church and Creeds of Christendom, and editor of the English translation of Lang's Commentary, William G. T. Shedd, 1820-1894, who besides other works wrote A History of Christian Doctrine, Charles Force Deems, 1820-1893, who wrote a work on the life of Christ, Henry Martin Dexter, 1821-1890, author of The Congregationalism of the Last Three Hundred Years, George R. Crooks, 1822-1897, who besides other labors in the fields of classics, wrote The Life of Bishop Matthew Simpson. Charles Porterfield Crouth, 1823-1883, author of The Conservative Reformation and Its Theology. Holland N. McTeer, 1824-1889, whose chief literary work was The History of Methodism and John Gilmory Shea, 1824-1892, who wrote many books on early American history connected with the Indians, one being A History of the French and Spanish Missions Among the Indian Tribes of the United States. John McClintock, 1814-1870, the scholarly Methodist divine and first president of Drew Theological Seminary, 
left a monument to his name in the great Cyclopedia of Biblical, Theological, and Ecclesiastical Literature, projected by him and his co-laborer, James Strong, 1822-1894, who completed the Herculean task and added yet other works, notably his exhaustive concordance of the Bible. Daniel Curry, 1809-1887, the keen editor and debater, has a gathered sheaf of his various addresses in platform papers. Austin Phelps, 1820-1890, wrote The Still Hour and The Theory of Preaching, which are fine specimens of his thoughtful work. And Phillips Brooks, 1835-1893, the renowned preacher, left sermons and addresses which still breathe the earnest and Catholic spirit of their cultured author. End of Part 2, Chapter 8 Recording by Kalinda in Lüneburg, Germany, on March 14, 2009 End of A Brief History of English and American Literature by Henry A. Beers